Who would you rather spend the night with? A, your wife, or B? B. <laughs> Married with Children was a wildly popular sitcom centered around Al Bundy played by Ed O'Neill, a sarcastic shoe salesman living in Chicago with his wife, Peg, and their two teenage kids. And if you've ever seen the show, you know his character is, well, a bit grumpy. He's also misogynistic, rude, fat phobic, and his jokes always centered around making fun of the women who orbited his life. Excuse me, but am I invisible? Possibly from Pluto. <laughs> well, let's face it, Marsh, there can't be enough milk in there for a cup of coffee. <laughs> now, of course, this show was made all in good fun, sort of like how it's kind of hard to criticize The Office because that was just a different time. When I got my hair cut chart, you asked me if I was a lesbian. Because, wow, that was one possible explanation as to why you got that hair. And Al wasn't the only one throwing shots in his marriage. Peggy, his wife, could be characterized as lazy, snarky, and a shopaholic with all of Al's money. But the show ran on for a decade, from 1987 to 1997, and as of this recording was the longest running live action sitcom to ever air on Fox. So it must have been relatable to its audience, right? Yeah, a show about an average middle-aged guy with an average income, unglamorous job, not-so-perfect family who disdains his wife is relatable, right? Ah, oh, Peg, would it really make you feel better if I told you I needed you? Yes, it would. <laughs> Let's dive into this, but first, greetings guest. Welcome to the patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking the grumpy old man trope. Now, Peg, as you know, I am the man. And a man's home is his cuff. With 20 million viewers in its heyday, an article from Entertainment Weekly titled Married with Children's Legacy from 1994 cites that the studio audience heavy with baseball cap wearing dudes whoops it up like a bunch of Raiders fans after a sack, and that taping sometimes had to stop so that they could be asked to pipe down. And while there are no exact demographic breakdowns of the show, industry sources have suggested that around 60 to 65 percent of the show's audience was male during its peak. This show is often seen as such a major success because of its stark contrast to all of the other perfect and a bit more wholesome family comedic sitcoms of that time, like The Cosby Show, which ran from 1984 to 1992, Full House from 1987 to 1995, and Home Improvement from 91 and 99. And people just wanted something more real than, well, this. I'll be home in time for dinner. Ooh, then I'll cook something for you. Would you do that for I'll me? Be, I'd be happy to. What will you make? I, I, haven't, I don't even know yet. <laughs> Yeah, not all men love their wives like that, bro. So this grumpy, middle-aged old man trope shows up in a lot of the entertainment that we consume. Movies like Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. Don't cry, I'm sorry. I wasn't cursing at you. I was cursing at the lady. You want a happy meal? We'll get you one of those happy meals. You got a happy meal? Can we get a happy meal? Will somebody get you a happy meal? Or Dennis the Menace. George, are you sleeping? I was until you started yakking. And while some of these movies are about grumpy men with long-term girlfriends and others feature grumpy men in marriages, the common theme is that this male caricature is often passed off as comedy, like, ha ha, the harmless, grumpy old male. What the hell going on here? Hey, shut up all that damn noise. This ain't Soul Train. Walter. Walter. Oh, baby, shut up. I'm just playing for the kids. But the consumption of this type of media and messaging has been conditioning women for far too long to believe that this is acceptable behavior from a man. Do you know how many females were at my house when I left there tonight? No, I can't say that I do. Seven, my wife. 
her sister, who's divorced. And I don't blame the guy for a second. Their mother, who must be 110 if she's a day. And three more whose names I didn't even catch. This quote-unquote grumpy behavior is not so fun when being experienced in real life, especially not for those who become tethered for decades to these sacks of like we've normalized this malfunction in our male partners and thus we have been in large numbers just accepting that this is what the men we marry will inevitably turn into mean grumpy old men you want to bend dust <laughs> you want to reach sweep you want sex just let me know when you're finished i'll come home <laughs> Good news is women aren't accepting that anymore. Uh, no, I'm doing fine. And even greater news is that women who have been accepting this behavior, our moms, aunties, and grandmas, their whole entire lives, are done putting up with sulky males later in life too. Now, Peg, I'm only going to say this one time. I want him out of here. I want you in the kitchen, and I want my supper now. After all, every passing minute is a chance to turn it all around. Let's talk about the gray divorce phenomenon. Gray divorce refers to the phenomenon of couples divorcing later in life, typically after age 50. This trend has been increasing in recent years, especially amongst baby boomers, and is characterized by long-term married couples who decide to separate as they approach or enter into retirement. According to the NIH National Institutes of Health, as of 2019, an astounding 36% of people, that's more than one in three, getting divorced were over the age of 50. In fact, nearly one in 10, that's about 9% of people divorcing in 2019, were at least age 65. Larry, we need to talk. It's over? NIH also cites that gray divorce rates were low and only grew modestly between 1970 and 1990 before doubling by 2010. And remember, it was in the year 1974 that the passage of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act took place, aka when women were finally able to apply for a credit card or loans on their own without a male cosigner. So for 20 years, gray divorce rates were low only modestly growing, but when we hit the 90s between 1990 and 2010, boom, this movement starts gaining some traction. NIH states that in 1990, fewer than 1 in 10 persons getting divorced were age 50 and older, but by 2010, more than 1 in 4 or 27% of people getting divorced were at least age 50. As stated earlier, in 2019, the rate, as of 2019, was at 36%. This article from Forbes titled, A Psychologist Explains Why Couples Gray Divorce After Years of Marriage, has some very interesting anecdotes from real couples going through this that I'd like to share. First up, Dan, age 69, and Rachel, age 68, share what led to the end of their 32-year marriage. Rachel. He studied with 25-year-old girls and suddenly he got a motorcycle driver's license and suddenly he wouldn't come home. From the experience of the long-standing betrayal and the experience of the lies that have also been told throughout all of these years, it's been 10 years. I really wanted to get a divorce a long, long time ago. But the argument was to not break up the family because there was a daughter who was still at home, says Rachel. Her husband or ex-husband, 69-year-old Dan, says, I went to study and an amazing world opened up for me that very, very much I wanted my ex-wife to be my partner in. At first, she complied and it was a lot of fun. At some point, she either got fed up with it or it didn't interest her. The divorce was essentially a final step in the process that has started years before. And with all of the suspicion that I have someone, what she caught up on was my infidelity. That it started there, but it didn't start from there. Okay, so that last sentence from 69-year-old Dan was a bit hard to follow, for me at least. But what we can take from this is that according to his ex-wife, Rachel, 68 years old, Dan, I guess he went back to school, started to study some subject, and he started being in the presence and getting attention from young 20-something-year-old women. Then he got a motorcycle because that's cool, right? 
and suddenly he stopped coming home at night. And Dan just wanted his wife to go along with his new life. He said, quote unquote, at first she complied. Yeah, Dan, women don't need to comply anymore. Sounds like he wasn't very considerate of her feelings. She stayed for the kid like so many women do. And eventually Rachel says, yeah, I'm not going to live the rest of my life letting you disrespect me. So it's over. Good job, Rachel. I think this illustrates perfectly how men are selfish and will always put themselves first. Another woman's story, Ruth, age 68, was previously married for 44 years. She reflects on the personality differences and the communication styles between her and her ex-husband. The ex-husband was not interviewed for the article. So Ruth states, I am a very warm person, very emotional, very hugging, very loving. And my partner was very cold. She also describes him as being very intelligent. We were dragged into endless arguments about who is right, what word was said, and what tone it was said, and what punishment was due for it. It was exhausting, says Ruth. For many years I wanted a divorce, and I was probably not strong enough to do it. In the early years I was so immature, think about it, the 1970s, what it meant to get divorced, we didn't have any examples of those who did it. It took me a while to even believe that I was in a situation which actually isn't good, Ruth adds. It sounds like Ruth was probably in a relationship with an emotionally abusive covert narcissistic male. She describes her ex-husband as very cold and how he exhausted her with endless arguments. Sounds like there was some tone policing going on and punishment. And she stayed because of the implications of divorce in her time were very much stigmatized. There were not a lot of people getting divorced and unfortunately, tying this back to the grumpy old man trope that we discussed earlier in the video, it took Ruth a while to even know that the situation that she was in was not a good one. Again, this goes back to two things, programming via the media and entertainment, normalizing this type of behavior in men, and on top of that, the isolation, people weren't talking about this. There was no internet to share or exchange stories. So all this made for a very bad situation in which a woman was trapped in for way too long, the isolation and the programming, simply because she thought that this was all normal behavior. So what are your thoughts on these topics, the grumpy old man trope and great divorce? Please share them in the comments below, I'd love to hear about it. And shout out to one of my subscribers for suggesting this topic. If you have any other suggestions on topics or films that you think I should cover, please don't be shy and write them in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.